Madagascar. For centuries, the bloodiest cockpit of all the seas, where the infamous Brotherhood of the Damned waited to plunder the treasure-laden galleons from India and Cathay, then returned, drunk with slaughter, to their pirate stronghold of last hope. Most ruthless of all was Captain William Kidd. He encountered the great London galleon, the Twelve Apostles, commanded by Admiral Lord Blaine, and approaching unsuspected in the guise of a peaceful merchantman, by a sudden treacherous salvo, he reduced her to a burning hulk. When night fell, the Twelve Apostles was only a blazing funeral pyre on the placid surface of a Madagascar lagoon. Stop me. There's a pretty sight. It'll be prettier still when the fire reaches the magazine, Captain. Pretty, though. Lots of stout seamen among them. They've been with us a long time. We can none of us live forever, Mr. Boyle. Dead men don't talk. Man your oars. We got this job to do before high tide. <laughs> If the tide catches us there, it'll save the king's hangman some rope. There you are. Deep enough to bury a man in. Give us a hand, mate. Already, Captain. Down she goes. What are you waiting for? Well, Captain, that chest's been in cabin a longish time. And we all thought as how it wouldn't do no harm to open up that chest and make sure that what was in it then is in it now. I suppose you remember what was in it? I, I remember an emerald necklace that came off that Portuguese ship, El Vengar. And all those pearls that we took from the big ship, the Virgin Queen. I remember a diamond medallion we got from that Moorish galleon off Madagascar. And could we ever forget that silver casket with the arms of Lord Blaine that you claimed for yourself after the taking of the Twelve Apostles, sir? Your neck will be stretched as long as your memory one of these days. Satisfied gallows meat? Put them back. Load away. There's something else you've forgotten. What do you want now? We've got but half an hour before the tide traps us. That's as may be, sir. But we're all equal in this, I take it. Equal shares, yes. Well, that key, then, what you put back in your belt. That goes down with the chest. Thus, we start all clear and no favors. And if some of us don't get back, it'll be that much easier open for them as does. Question me on it again, would you? I'll rip you from belly to chime. <laughs> such callous rascals that we'd leave a dead comrade without commending his soul to his new master. Here lieth one who through treachery, 
and avarice would have placed in jeopardy the lives of honest men. And here may he lie forever in the sands of Madagascar. Rest in peace. It's time to be out, my lad. It's time to be away. gentleman's a gentleman, he's a gentleman. That's all there is to it, sir. I'm one of nature's gentlemen, but I need polish, my good man. If I'm to improve myself... The gentleman employs the terminology, my good man, only when addressing lower servants, or his inferior, sir. You see, that's why I need you. In my upbringing... The gentleman never sucks his teeth, sir. Many a man's social career has been ruined by less, sir. You seem to know your business. I want the best mine and I can pay for it. Hundred quid a year. An infallible mark of the person of quality is his reluctance to pay his domestics high wages. Don't say so. Merely an idiosyncrasy of good breeding, sir. Oh, uh, Sixty quid a year, then? You realize I've never been on board a ship before, sir. Oh, don't let that frighten you. To the contrary. In fact, since I was a nipper, I've had rather an adventurous inclination toward life on the bound in Maine. It should be quite educational, sir. You'll learn a lot, no doubt. Is it a bargain, then? Very well, sir. My hand on it? Oh. It is your proposal, my Lord Bellamont, that Captain Kidd sail to meet our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, and give him safe convoy through the pirate waters of Madagascar. May it please your majesty, yes. That needs a bold and adventurous man. Bring in this Captain Kidd while we take the measure of him. Captain William Kidd. Your Royal Majesty, my noble lords. Belmont, is this your roaring killer of Spanish buccaneers? <laughs> Me, my lad, I am only a peaceful shipmaster who must do trade with other ships without inquiring too closely about their business, and it was so I fell into the hands of the Twelve Apostles, a king's ship turned pirate. In Madagascar waters? I have never been in Madagascar waters, Your Grace. It was off the southern tip of Africa, where I had gone to trade in elephant's teeth. Who commanded her? One of your admirals, Your Majesty. Name of Lord Blaine. He did turn pirate then. Sufficiently, my lad, to put fear in honest traders like myself. And if you are successful in this voyage, Captain, what reward do you expect? May it please your majesty, having forfeited me honor in that I was forced to strike me colors to a pirate, I want no reward but to regain it in the service of your majesty. Unless it be, or is it true, that Lord Blaine's lands are estreated and his title forfeit? Yes. All, well, all I ask is that if I lay this renegade nobleman by the heels, is that you honor be humble self with his castle and his lands. Is that all you want, Captain Kidd? Not a farden more, Your Majesty. 
Hmm. The fellow treats of a title so lightly, he must be bursting with noble blood. Though I confess he keeps it well hid. Aye, sir, you can no more judge of a man by his appearance than you can judge the extent of a nobleman's brains by the expensiveness of his wit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I to suppose that the captain of the King's Guard would deign to fence with me? Come, Captain. Is your courage less than your wit? Nay, sir, I know nothing of uh, fence. You must come at me quickly, as though you'd kill me. Very well, then. I ask pardon, sir. I have a hot head when roused. I only meant to demonstrate. And to good purpose, Captain. Your Majesty is satisfied with the captain of our choosing? I can think of none better. I thank you, sir. And now, Captain, the main mission of your cruise will be to meet a great ship, the Quida Merchant, which is sailing from India with vast treasures, and to give her safe conduct, in my name, past the pirate waters of Madagascar. But, Your Majesty, will her commander accept me letter of mark as sufficient authority to... You shall have a letter to our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, who is returning in her. That he is to accept your protection. And to submit to all matters pertaining to the safety of the ship and her treasure, sire. Oh, yes. And now, sire, me crew. Your crew? Captain Kidd wishes to recruit a crew from the pirates now under capital sentence in Newgate and the Marshalsea. A crew of condemned pirates? Aye, sir. There's none would be so loyal, nor fight so desperate as cutthroats under sentence of death, if they knew that at the end of the voyage, a royal pardon would be in their pockets. But I shall hold you accountable for their good conduct. Between their conduct and mine, Your Majesty. There will be little to choose. And now, goodbye. And God speed you. I am but his unworthy sparrow. eat the bill scum from an African slaver. Adam, don't let that temper get you the lash again. If I must hang, I'll hang. But I'll go to the gallows with clean guts, at least. Hey, you! What kind of stinking maggot's meat is this? Warders! Warders! There's that dainty crumb mercy complaining about the taste of the king's bounty again. Watch it. Bounty? Bounty me eye! The king's allowance is threepence a day for food, not muck from the sewers of Whitechapel. Making trouble again, eh, Mercy? I'm asking only what a man's legally entitled to. Here, smell this. Delicious. Here, your governor. What sort of a kingdom is this? Where a man's condemned before he's heard and starved before they're hanging. Who's that quarrelsome fella? Out of mercy. He was taken in a pirate ship by His Majesty's frigate Wasp. He's always escaping, so that's why we keep him in chains. He's got a lacing of tiger's blood in him. Phew. This ain't exactly a flower garden, is it? Oh, forgive me, Governor. These are two of my officers. Uh, Mr. Boyle, Governor Landers. Mr. Lorenzo, Governor Landers. Spanish blood. A pretty lot of sinners. Capitan, do you think there is anyone down there knows us? I hope not. Governor, would you be good enough to tell them what we're here for? Give heed, you, you vermin. Here's news to your advantage. Is the hangman dead, then? Out with it, then, Jack Nasty Face. Is it that your mother's turned into an honest woman? Silence, you mutinous dogs. 
If another man speaks, I'll trice him up by the thumbs and flay him raw. Governor, is that the way to win the love of these unfortunate gentlemen? Now then, me bullies, would you rather do the gallows dance and hang in chains till the crows pick your eyes from your rotting skulls? Or would you feel the roll of a stout ship beneath your feet again? I have a vessel, the Adventure Galley, and the King's Commission to Sailor. And for those who show a loyal and a stout heart, there's a royal pardon in the offing. Which of you knows the waters off Madagascar? I do. Would you have him unlocked, Governor? Order, unlock him. Look you then, I want men with iron in their blood and steel in their sinews. And the first up here is the first enlisted. Governor, if your waters are ready, would you be good enough to have them lower the ropes? Lower away! Ready, lads. Lay your hands on that, I'll make you a free man. Hello, now. Thanks. Peter Shafto. Peter Shafto. Regardless of the fact that I'm your captain, you will always address a gentleman as sir, scum. Aye, sir. Make your mark. On board. Name? Adam Mercy, sir. Oh, so it's you. Mercy, that's a comical handle for a blade of fortune. Mercy. It's also something the world needs more of. Fire and death of philosopher, you speak cultured. Were you by any chance stable boy to a noble house? Perhaps. I was also master gunner to a buccaneer you may have heard of, Captain Avery. Avery's master gunner. We've need of a master gunner, Mr. Boyle, and from what I've heard, uh, Avery was a shrewd hand at picking them. The berth's yours for as long as you can handle it. I can handle it. Swivel gun a long time. I'll forfeit a guinea for every miss. You'll forfeit your neck if you miss while you're on my ship. Make your mark. And you can write. We'll give you a nice bath. You'll draw a uniform befitting a master gunner. On board. Next man. Name? Bartholomew Blivens, sir. Bartholomew Blivens. Make your mark. Down below. Sir, our compliments full. Bovey, I thought you... Yes, you thought I was dead. I can hardly believe my eyes. You mean you don't want to believe them? Now, come, come, Mr. Povey, is that kind or is that fair? As fair as what you did that day you abandoned me on a Bahama reef. If you please, Mr. Povey, it is not the time to talk about that. Oh, it's the time, all right. Unless you want me to... I know. 
in which case your present voyage is over before it's begun. No, 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 Povey. Mr. Boyle, would you take over, please? Mr. Lorenzo, take the deck watch. Come to my cabin. bleeds when I think of one of your delicate constitution having to fend for yourself on a coral reef, Mr. Pope. Come off it, Captain. I know why you marooned me. It was so there'd be only three of you to share instead of four. It's true. A hostile wind did blow us away from oh. your reef. Between friends, we might have sailed back at exactly what you would have done, Mr. Povey. So no more of your sentimental nonsense, please. Now that we are four again, what then? We're not four. We're two. Boyle and Lorenzo, dull clods. Twenty thousand pounds apiece in their hands would only be spent in sinful ways. And you propose to remove them from the path of temptation? How? A knife in the dark? I'm not a violent man, Mr. Povey. I detest violence. People have such an awkward habit of getting in my way. I am an ambitious man, Mr. Povey. And an ambitious man, if he be bold enough, can carve himself a kingdom. I'm going to be a lord, my friend. And that, for a commoner like myself, takes a deal of money. And that's why there could be two less to share before we raise old England again. You cold-gutted shark. Oh, our flatterer. Oh, I'm glad you're back again, Mr. Povey. You've no idea how gratifying it is to have a congenial soul to confide in. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's something I want to tell you. I have left with a trend a sealed letter containing an exact and complete account of certain previous happenings, only to be opened in case, just in case, of course, you should happen to return to England without me. Of course, my dear fellow. Very sensible of you. Now I know you'll have a Happy voyage. I shall too. I look up my quarters. Madagascar waters. We'll pick up the search where we left off. Every officer on board has a servant. I'll request the captain to assign you to me, then we can be together.
Yes, I've spent a good many years of my life at sea, my lady, but I doubt if any woman minds a dash of salt, even in a peer of the realm like myself. Now, if my lady will join me in a minuet. My lady, sir, not me lady. Blast me, Shadwell. Does one gentleman creep up on another without a cough or a spit or something to warn him? I'm not a gentleman, sir. I'm a gentleman's gentleman. Pity about the hair. I suppose you've tried everything. Bear's grease. Prenatal influence, perhaps. Dinner, sir, sir. Thank you, Shadwell. Pardon, sir. I'll show you at your place. Captain, what's all this mummery? You can forget your bilge water manners for the time, Mr. Boyle. You are now officers on a king's ship. So a man must starve while his manners fatten. I know, I know. And in a king's ship, it is customary for the officers to rise when the captain enters. That's better. Gentlemen, be seated. Mr. Mercy, tell us something about yourself. You already know what I was of consequence, sir. While under Avery, I was taken by a king's ship and brought to London. There I was tried for a pirate and condemned. You were innocent, of course. No, sir, I was guilty. You speak above your station. How came you to go on the account? Call it uh, love of adventure, crossed in love, a scandal, perhaps a mixing of all three. And you've seen something of the world? Enough, sir, to dislike what I've seen and to know there's small hope for a better. Perhaps you'll prefer the next world, Mr. Mercy. You were close enough to it when you were in the condemned hold at Newgate. But I'm keeping you from your dinner. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, a toast to the king, and since proposing it is the privilege of the youngest present, the honor falls to Mr. Mercy. <laughs> Mr. Mercy, we're waiting. No, sir. Since I have little love for the king, I'll neither propose his health nor drink it. Nevertheless, you are on a kingship. Kingship of the devils. It's all the same to me, sir. I owe him nothing. You owe him your neck, Mr. Mercy. If it were not for his bounty, you'd be dancing daintily on air at Wapping. I owe my reprieve to you, Captain. So to you, I'll drink him gladly, but not to William. You stand up and drink to his majesty's health as a king's officer should. Or by fire and flame, I'll have you shipped back to Newgate on the first vessel we speak. Gentlemen, the king. The king, king God bless you. It's 
curious. Do you suppose His Majesty put him on board to spy us out? Well, we found him chained to a pillar at Newgate. It wouldn't be too hard for the king to plant him there. Yes, but why would he speak so openly against the king? Your wits are even duller than you, 